It's okay to not be okay. Being tired of being productive, so meta, is totally normal. We're not machines and we need to refresh our brains and bodies in order to function and get back to work. I also get it. Watching videos like this, information overload, you feel overwhelmed, you always feel like, I'm not doing that much, I'm not doing enough progress, and you're always going to beat yourself up for it. So, before we end this mini-series, I really want to touch on a specific topic and I think this is the best way to close this mini-series. Let's learn how to take a break. Welcome to Productively Creative, a five-part series where I share tips and ideas on how to stay productive without having to compromise your creativity. Productivity fatigue is something that we all deal with subconsciously and it's time that we acknowledge it in the best way possible. In this day and age, since digital is mostly taking over, we are consuming so much more content than we used to before, and our brains have been wired to always be turned on. I don't know if you notice it, but I get super distracted when I'm on my computer all day. It might seem like I'm just on one device, but I have like a million things to do on that one device. So with that, it's really important to talk about rest and recreation and how they fit into the bigger picture of managing your productivity and creativity. Blocking my days off has been a huge learning curve for me because as a freelancer, I've always trained myself to work 24-7. I guess it's like that constant need to fill a void because I'm not having a regular job where I get paid regularly. So when I started in my career, I was always like, work, work, work. I would work until 3 a.m. and suffer the next day. But one thing that I've really been cultivating and learning as I, you know, I get older, I also become more mindful of what I do at work and with my personal endeavors is to take at least one to two days off in a week. My non-negotiable is every Sunday, I cannot do any work. Saturday is like mostly okay because I do have some events lined up on some Saturdays and I also want to make sure that I finish all the tasks I need in a week and I do a lot. So my non-negotiable is Sunday, but if I can, I usually squeeze in a midweek day off. If not the whole day, you know, take a half day. I think it's also very important to consider that days off does not mean like a full day. Maybe like a half day or leave work early or finish work early if you can. It's really, really important because your brain has been super in the zone doing all these things. It just needs like some time to switch off. I do know sometimes that you also have to work on weekends. For example, if you're, you have a full-time job and your side hustle is doing creative work, then I suggest at least like not working every weekend if you can. If not, maybe take two to three hours off, start small, and then build it up as to a whole day. I do realize that having days off has really helped me center my attention like, oh my gosh, it's my day of today, I'm not doing anything. It's such a great feeling and that's something we need as creative people. Also, I want to quickly share this post that Austin Kleon, he's the author of Still Like an Artist and Show Your Work and Keep Going. He's one of my favorite authors and writers. He wrote about this post called, I'm No Longer Weekend by the Weekend. And in this post, which I'll link down below, author Beth Pickens says, Taking a day off restores their spirit and energy. This is from the book, Make Your Art No Matter What. I highly also recommend checking that out. And I think as creatives, we're always wired to have so much ideas all the time, which I always mention to you guys. But it's also important to take some time off and really detach from that state of mind in order for your brain to fully reset and become ready for the coming week or the coming month ahead. Some of the things I like to do on my days off in random order would be to disengage from socials or I usually turn off my phone. I also try to read for a couple of hours. I think my favorite de-stressor on a day off is actually doing meal prep and cooking. It takes up a lot of time and it's something that's very mindful so no screen time. It's really really great for me. I also do yoga and meditation. Mostly things that don't have to be tied in with my job and being paid. I also try to draw sometimes, but not because I have to post it on Instagram. I just draw because I need to put out something and like have some sense of creative expression. I think one of the challenges for me as a creative business owner and like doing this as a job is like I don't 
really have that much time anymore to do my hobbies as a creative person, like creative hobbies. So, kind of am getting into the swing of things and learning to be more mindful about drawing just for fun. And you know, days off are very different for every single person. In my case, we can't go out of the house and I'm always just here. But you can spend your days off with your family, book a trip, go somewhere, go exploring in the woods if you can, if you're not in the city like me. It really does help refresh your mind and help yourself forget a bit about work because that's not just the only thing that you have to do while you're here on Earth. Setting your boundaries. So if you're a people pleaser like me, let's talk. The best way for you to really take your time and like detach from other people is to learn to say no and set boundaries. I've learned this the hard way because I didn't realize how much time people were actually taking from me by messaging me or emailing me and me giving them the time of day. Because sometimes these are things that are not as important. I'm not talking about like friends messaging but work stuff. But also you know friends messaging constantly while you're at work is very very distracting. I also would like to point out that just because you have your phone and you're online doesn't mean you have to respond immediately. I've been that kind of person for a very long time until I learned the magic of not being available to everyone because I have to take care of myself first. And in some way, you might think like you're doing everyone a service by responding fast or doing, you know, doing the deed, which, yeah, I, I value efficiency. But also, if it's not urgent, you don't really have to respond to it. I've also learned that I don't have to respond if I don't want to, especially if it's not work-related or if it's just like an inquiry. I read this in Deep Work. There was like a situational part in the book where uh, Cal Newport, the author, was like, you don't have to respond to every email that you encounter. It's your choice because it's your inbox. And also, to add to that, I use the app Hey. So my email has a screener. So it means like when someone emails me that I don't know, there's a screener if I can, it's like the voice or like X factor. I can click yes or no. So if I don't respond to the email, I immediately click no. Because if not, I'm just gonna end up clicking, indulging on it, and sometimes getting annoyed and like, it, it really breaks my, my work mojo. So I just try to avoid that as much as possible. I value my personal space in that sense. Three tips for setting your boundaries. The first one is to please notify every single person that you're on day off or week off or whatever like you're on leave that's why out of office emails exist and i don't actually blame the person because i understand that they're setting boundaries and it's just making them more at peace with the fact that i don't have to respond because i already gave a disclaimer the same goes for freelancing you know i am my own boss so i tend to mandate my own days off one time i had a full weekend off long weekends so that was like four days by the third day, I've already gotten messages from some of the people I work with asking me to check my email. Um, can you approve this and stuff? I said, no, I'm on day off. I already said it on the first day. So be true to your word. You might feel guilty at first, but at the same time, it's also a matter of establishing this and being assertive about the boundaries you set. Second tip is to maximize these two settings on your phone. Something similar to this, I guess, because I use an iPhone. The first one is screen time. So there are a lot of things under screen time. There's also called downtime. So if you don't want to use any app on your phone or, you know, you can just turn it off because honestly, there's no app that can be used. Or if you want to just watch YouTube or do something else that's not work related, you can definitely tinker with your screen time function, especially if you want to be not involved with any work tasks. I get it. It's very, very challenging because a lot of work tasks are being communicated not just via email but already in chat apps like Viber, Telegram. My main work platform is actually Telegram and I also use Telegram to chat with my friends and send random stickers. So there is like a blur between work and personal stuff. So I try to use screen time as much as possible. Tip number three, but I, I don't really do this or if I can, I just keep it in a drawer. Store your devices somewhere where you can't access them. For example, for me, I leave my laptop in my studio because when I'm on my days off, I'm at home. 
I do have my iMac here, but I use it. It's very slow, so I just use it for Netflix or whatever thing, like watching Mad Men or something. And it's really important to do this because it feels like temptation when your phone is right beside you. It's just like when you put your phone right by your bedside. The moment you wake up, you check your phone. It's a bad habit. I, I can attest to that. I still do it sometimes because it also acts as my alarm. But you can, if you can get a physical alarm, that would be great. You know, work is not our life and that's something everyone needs to remember and we need to take that into heart. Also, you've probably heard this before but I'm gonna tell it to you again, productivity does not equate your self-worth. I think with the prevalence of the productivity culture that we have these days, there is that certain level of you know, pressure to have to deliver, but you have to remember that if you can control or if you can manage some of them, it will be better. Because imagine if you poured so much energy into being productive for one day. I keep talking about this, the next day you're going to regret it because there won't be enough fuel left. It's like a car, you know, you can't use up all the gas in one day. You have to be able to pace it out. Unless you're going for a road trip, that's a different story. And very common comparison, when you're running a marathon, you cannot use up all your energy on the first leg. You have to be able to run continuously and keep your pace. I think that holds true also for being productive. And you know, I don't think it's nice to beat yourself up for not being productive. I think your relationship with yourself also plays a big role with this part of you know work getting things done how you see yourself not everyone is wired to be performing at their 100% best so give yourself like a little bit of applause if you're like 50% today maybe tomorrow you'll be 80% you don't have to be 100% all the time that's something I've also learned I also want to touch on like when it comes to productivity I'm not 100% productive sometimes my idea of productivity is Drawing on Procreate while watching Netflix, and that seems to work. At least I get the job done. So you don't really have to beat around the bush and like, oh, I have to be deep, work, focused. That happens, but it also doesn't happen all the time. I have also been reading a lot of articles about productivity, so I'm going to be sharing them with you before this episode comes to a close. Check the links in the description to read more about it. As we end this five-part series, here's a quick rundown of some of the most important things I'd like you to take away from each episode. Experiment a lot. Your productivity system should work for you and not the other way around. Write down your goals so it's easier to prioritize. Set your intentions at the start of each day. Have one main focus to guide you. Don't be so hard on yourself when things go wrong. Your time, energy, and resources are all manageable. And of course, block your days off and set some boundaries. I do hope that Productively Creative has given you ideas into becoming more productive and more creative in the best way possible given your lifestyle and preferences. I also hope that these tips have given you some sort of direction also in your creative journey. If you had one takeaway from this mini-series, do let me know in the comments down below what it is. And I also hope you can check out our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash abc. It's our art club where creatives gather and we are also talking about productivity a lot at the channels and our Discord. And it's a way for you to support this YouTube channel. Also want to thank my team, Kaz and Yane, for helping me put this idea into life. I literally just thought about this after asking you guys on Instagram about your concerns with planning and analog systems and productivity. And I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. So I do hope you enjoy it. You can click the link in the description also for the full playlist and binge watch the previous episodes. I don't really recommend binge watching because it might be info overload, but maybe one a day would work. Also, you can find me on Instagram. It's at abc. You can also find my shop on Instagram. I have books and stationery at shopabc or abc.store. And lastly, for more ideas and inspiration on your creative journey, check out at alwaysbecreating.art on Instagram. Thank you so much. This has been Abby, and I do hope you stay productive, stay creative, and learn how to take breaks. See you on the next video. Bye!